Oh, well, I think we will just get started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome to my talk on um, building FlexJ applications, FlexJS applications with Maven. Um, well, if you sort of looked through the history of talks I did, you will probably see sort of this name quite often. But the f strange thing is, every time I held the talk, it was something completely different because it's, it was such a moving target. Last year, I had this talk, and I was building with uh, FlexMojos. Well, I was going to talk about that. That was sort of a just in situation. Uh, things stopped working the day before I held the talk. And, but today, we're talking about something that's working, hopefully. Yeah, well, yada, yada. Um, a little about me. Well, uh, it really feels sort of strange uh, introducing myself. I think you all know me. But, well, my name is Christopher Dutz. I'm a senior IT consultant uh, and work for a company called Cocentric. Um, I get one day per week usually to work on open source stuff. Uh, I had little luck with some projects I did the last few years, so I was able to actually do quite a lot more work on open source. Um, as my time there. Uh, I'm an Apache member. I'm part of the Flex uh, PMC and committer there. Uh, I had been uh, the Flex Mojo's lead developer. Well, I still am, but I'm not very active there because due to recent changes in the Maven, uh, in Maven project, um, it started getting harder and harder to support that. So that's sort of a dead end for me. Um, I'm a total open source enthusiast, so all my free time uh, sort of goes into open source projects. And there will my Twitter handle if you want to see what I'm up to. So what am I going to talk about? Well, first of all, why Maven? Um, after that, sort of, uh, I'll just fly through a five-minute Maven introduction, sort of just get the interesting parts and point out what they are. Um, a teeny-weeny little introduction into the F Maven FlexJS build lifecycle. So, um, who, who here knows Maven? Okay, so everyone? Hmm, yeah, well, maybe I'll just do it for the recording. <laughs> um, then I'm um, going to show you how easy it is to get started with building a FlexJS application with Maven uh, using one of our archetypes. We've recently started um, creating quite a lot of uh, little archetypes for different um, scenarios, so I'll just show you how easy it is. And then we'll have a little deep dive into the POM XML, the configuration, um, to show you how you achieve uh, different things. Um, yeah, after that's done, well, I'm gonna talk a little about the current development, what I'm currently working on, and what is to come. And hopefully you have some questions that I'll answer then. But you can always interrupt me if there is something you don't understand. So, why Maven? Um, well, Maven is a well-established standard. Uh, it works everywhere and it sort of works at every customer I came across. Um, it has a great IDE support, well, except uh, Eclipse that sort of has issues. Um, it has an even better uh, CI server support. Uh, so running unit tests on Jenkins is really easy. Um, and it has a well-established standard for accessing dependencies. Um, in the last few years, I've noticed that with upcoming of uh, uh, SBT or uh, NPM, uh, a, a lot of problems at my customers were related to, well, they have their closed environments and it's problematic to get dependencies using these other not so established uh, build tools, but Maven worked in every place. So I really like that. Um, the super duper mini uh, five minute Maven introduction, I think it might even be less than five minutes. Um, well, the main thing is uh, in Maven you describe your build in one file, the POM XML, it's the project object model. You describe how things are built, uh, what dependencies you need, and um, well, 
as I said, everything you need to build the, the, the project goes into that file. Um, Maven is built up around the concept of inversion of control. So um, if you're used to AND, you usually say, tell AND, do this, then do that. And before you can do this, make sure you have done something else. Uh, and you describe every step of the way. Uh, with Maven, that's a different uh, approach. Maven sort of says, yeah, well, I'm in phase X. What do I have to do? I'm in phase Y. What do I have to do? And it has a very fixed uh, uh, life cycle. Um, the main concept is that the default use case should work with almost no configuration at all. So an ideal approach would be for a Flex.js application that I just specify the type uh, SWIC or SWIFT, um, and off I go. Um, configuration can be used to sort of uh, change the defaults and adjust it to, the, uh, to your needs. Well, same as, as if you're building a jar file, well, you will probably have use cases where you have to fine tune the build. Same applies here. Uh, but Maven allows to do that really easily. Um, one thing that's really great is its dependency management. Um, I remember we had a lot of issues with the Ant build with dependencies that sort of had to be downloaded and sort of checksums, uh, verifying checksums, getting transitive dependencies, servers that sort of move, uh, have different URLs or there were a lot of issues in getting stuff. With Maven, it's really easy. Well, as long as you sort of use well-established stuff. And, well, we are using almost just um, standard stuff. Um, so I think that's a really, really great benefit of Maven. So um, I think a lot of questions on the mailing list uh, I've come across and answered in, in the past were sort of related to where does Maven put stuff to, and where does Maven get stuff from? Well, let's say this is sort of the default setup. You can see at the bottom you have the project. It sort of consumes, let's say, artifacts, and it produces an artifact. Um, Maven takes care of sort of storing that in the local repository. That's just a directory on your uh, hard drive somewhere. Um, or it gets stuff that's missing from a place called Maven Central that's sort of, from a Maven point of view, that's home. If it doesn't find anything, it asks home. Do you have it? If it has uh, that artifact, it downloads it, stores it in the local repository, and passes that on to the project. So that's the default case. Um, in case of Flex.js, our ecosystem is a little more complex. So. We had to solve uh, quite some problems, and that's sort of how it looks for Flex.js. So everyone who's currently working on uh, the development versions or working on snapshots, um, you need to tell Maven about the Apache snapshot repository. Um, this is usually done, um, every, anyone who had checked out uh, our source code before, um, you'll find a file called settings-template.xml. So that's a little example file that you can use to tell Maven about the Apache uh, Maven repository. Uh, and as soon as you specify that, a lot of problems go away. But not all, yeah? Well, that's a good question, and I'm just going to come to that right away, because not everything we need is available in a Maven repository. Um, as Flex.js is able to compile JavaScript, well, we're safe on that side, but also uh, for Flash and Air, we need dependency. We have dependencies to stuff uh, Adobe provides us with, uh, stuff uh, in the Air SDK or uh, the Player Global, uh, resources, they aren't available as Maven artifacts. So um, times prior to uh, Apache Flex, the guy who maintained Flex Mojos, he sort of had a deal with Adobe to manually convert 
an air or a flash flex SDK into Maven artifacts and publish that. But we didn't get that permit, so uh, we had to find a different way. And we're using a um, Maven extension. It's sort of a really low-level extension of Maven itself that um, intercepts requests, uh, so, sort of, uh, it's sort of like an uh, adapter sitting between Maven and Maven Central. So we check if Maven tries to resolve an Adobe artifact, and if it doesn't work, it intervenes and asks the user if it, he accepts a license, and if he does, it automatically downloads from Adobe's web servers, unpacks that in the temporary directory, and locally con does this conversion automatically. And that is the reason why we have to put the repository in the settings XML, because the Mavenizer sort of has to be found before Maven even starts parsing the palm. So without this, um, Maven would just say, yeah, well, I can't find it, and just dies. Um, with the Mavenizer, um, it does find it. As soon as we release the Mavenizer, uh, or the, well, let's call it the official name is the uh, Flex SDK Converter, I think. Um, as soon as we release that, a lot of that hassle goes away because then it will be found in Maven Central and we no longer have a need for that. But I still have to put a lot of work into that, especially in handling DMG files. Um, but we're on a good way. Uh, so that was the five minute introduction. I hope it was sort of five minute ish. Uh, anyone who wants a more detailed one, um, we did a recording last year in Vancouver, and thanks to Justin, who sort of spent uh, 100 hours in cutting all my ums and uhs out of it. Um, it's even relatively short. I think the talk was about three hours, and the final version is uh, two hours and 50 minutes, so that was a lot of ums and uhs in there. Um, so feel free to have a look at that. We put it online just to educate the project, to get a little more comf um, comfortable with Maven. Um, so assuming uh, I said that Maven has a fixed life cycle, um, it does look rather complex, and anyone who had a look at the video will probably recognize the picture. Um, I doubt. I have no idea. Okay. Eventually? I don't know. Well, um, as I said, uh, every project has a fixed life cycle. Uh, so it does look rather bad if you look at it that way. Um, can you read it? Yeah, so you can see that if I, for example, say I'd like to run test. I know that it's going to go through validate, initialize, generate sources, process sources, and all these steps up to test, and well, including test. Um, but it doesn't mean these are offers the, the Maven um, provides, so it sort of starts, okay, I'm in the validate phase. Um, does anybody have anything to do now? No? Okay, then uh, how about initialize? Are there any things we have to do initialize? Um, and exactly what has to be done in which phase is uh, defined by the packaging. So um, I think um, you might have seen one of these POM files. We're going to look at one in a few minutes. Um, it has a packaging type. Uh, and if you set that to SWIC or SWIFT, uh, Maven automatically knows what to do in which of these phases. I summed them up a little, and I think this isn't even going to fit on the screen. I, but I think you're going to get a, quite a good idea of what's going to happen. Um, for example, for uh, a SWIC, uh, a, flash, a flex library, um, we only operate, for example, in the generate sources. Um, um, for those of you familiar uh, with uh, FlexJS and uh, the, these, we call them type defs. And I, when creating the slides, I found out that I should uh, eventually change the name of that goal to generate type defs. 
Um, it's a part of our build in which we parse JavaScript files and from the JS doc annotations, we create AS doc um, files that will be used uh, to tell the IDE about types of non-flex uh, non libraries. So we can use, um, we can use uh, normal JavaScript libraries put them into our project if they are equipped with uh, these uh, JS doc annotations. This phase will produce the action script code uh, that will be used as interfaces. Um, then we're using the default Maven resources plugin to simply copy static resources. Um, in the compiler, uh, if you're using the Ant version, we did have problems in the past that sort of if you had static resources that were not JPG but JPEG, things didn't get copied. That was because the compiler sort of handled things manually. Uh, in the Maven world, we simply rely on the Maven resources plugin and whatever we, we put in a resource directory, that's copied to the output. Um, then come the fun parts, um, the compilation. Uh, so we have the compile AS um, thing that deals with uh, compiling the uh, Flash version. Uh, we have uh, the, the part that deals with compiling the JavaScript version. And we have uh, a part that compiles the type diffs. They have to be sort of compiled slightly different, and I think I might be able to reduce these two JS and AS um, plugins into one uh, after the, the, the last changes. Um, but right now it's uh, sort of three executions, but, the, but Maven sort of decides on, ah, well, there's no JavaScript in here, so I haven't generated anything, so I'm not going to compile the, the type devs. Um, yeah, uh, we already got, um, I got everything set up to be able to start compiling, generating, and running unit tests, but I haven't uh, filled these uh, go plugins with uh, life yet because uh, I'm still waiting on getting some time to finish FlexUnit uh, to compile. Um, when I look, well, this is the life cycle for a, a library. So if I say type swick, that's what's going to happen. If I put swift in there, uh, that's when we want to build an application that we can actually run. Uh, so life cycle looks a little different there. You, you can see there is no uh, extern generation because type devs are always libraries, never applications. Um, so you can see in that case, in the compile phase, we're running compile app. Um, I think I could have left away the test things, but in the end, for example, the package phase is quite interesting in this case, because if we compile for Flash, the output is one file. Um, but if we compile for JavaScript, we get a directory full of multiple files. And Maven doesn't like that. Maven only likes one single file to be deployed because it sort of uploads that to remote servers and it only uploads one file um, and no directories. And that's why in the package JS uh, um, plugin, uh, we sort of pack up everything that the compiler produced and create a WAR file from that. Uh, that file is then sort of uploaded or locally deployed, and it gives us the chance to use... Um, who of you had, has built a, a web application with Maven? So, oh, cool. So, um, let me explain a little. So, assuming you're building a, a server-side web application and you want to bundle a, a Flex.js front-end with that, you can easily now use the overlay mechanism to simply take the content of one of those Flex.js VARs and simply unpack it in the output of your application. So all you have to do is sort of finish your server application, add a dependency to your um, Flex.js uh, um, VAR file, 
and you're ready to go. You get a WAV file that has the Flex.js application included. And would you recommend that because your, um, your front end that will probably talk to, your, to some API of your server, so it has to be compatible, so maybe it's better to have everything in the same project because if you make a change to the back end API, you will probably have to change the front end as well. But if you have uh, separate projects, you have to release the front end at first to put it in the server when you want to change the, the back end API. Uh, yeah, well, uh, the thing is, uh, I never have my code in my uh, web application module. I usually have my code and my API in separate modules. And then I sort of have the, the WAF plugin or WAF project is simply a wrapper that sort of packs everything together. So yes, I do have the Flex.js application and the server and the API in one multi-module build, okay. but not inside the same module. Okay. Because I, I usually, uh, I have my model and that's built and then I have my action script model generated from the Java model and sort of then that's built and then everything's packed together. So yeah, I, I think uh, you, I think you would get into real big trouble if you sort of started having one Maven project with Flex and Java in that. So I think oh, that would be a pact with the devil probably. In the, in the real world, uh, they're separate teams a lot of times. You're yeah. front end team and your back end team are separate. But you would want to combine it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I said, um, are there any questions to the general way uh, Maven builds. So, okay, yeah? Uh, if you have to put something into the Maven Center, I have never done this before. Mm, yeah, well, usually you're not allowed to deploy anything at Maven Central, but it's sort of, uh, there are um, other uh, Maven repositories hosted by other people, for example, uh, the company Sonatype, who sort of creates, uh, created the software Maven Central runs on. Uh, they have their own uh, repositories. Uh, it's the Sonatype OSS repository or so. So you could sign up there. And um, so you have to do a little paperwork, but as soon as you get that done, you can release stuff to their repository and that gets synced to uh, Maven Central. The other way is we have uh, our own Nexus installation uh, at the Apache Software Foundation. So that's the, the repository you have to tell Maven about to find the Mavenizer. So that's where that is. And as soon as we release something, um, it sort of disappears from the snapshot repository and goes to the official uh, Apache release repository. And that is again synced with Maven Central. So. Uh, when doing a Maven release, I just did a, a Blaze DS release a few weeks ago. All I have to do is sort of close repository, accept, and uh, yeah, I think a few minutes after that, things pop up at uh, Maven Central. Yeah. Okay. So, um, one thing I uh, put most of my time into uh, is making it easy for people to get started in developing with Flex.js or easy to contribute to Flex.js. Um, and uh, after cleaning up the build uh, greatly by uh, adding the, the Maven build, um, we started providing little so-called archetypes. Um, Maven has this archetype mechanism that allows Hmm. That uh, allows projects to sort of create little templates for different use cases. Uh, and uh, for example, we now have uh, five archetypes. Well, one is uh, a simple application archetype. It's an archetype that produces a Hello World application that you can compile to Flash or JavaScript. Then uh, we have a pure JS archetype that might be interesting for uh, people that want to get started with, uh, that only want to target the, uh, the, the browser and don't care about Flash, or they want to use some libraries that will not be available to Flash. So 
the pure JS archetype will help you get set up there. Um, on the other side, we have the same with a, a Swift archetype. So that is a project that just builds Flash. That could be interesting if you're planning on building a mobile application that sort of uses some features of, uh, of your mobile phone or so. You will never compile that to JavaScript. So that's a good starting point for um, pure uh, Flash uh, development. Um, the last two, a simple library archetype. So if you want to sort, you don't want to build everything into one big application, but you want to apply uh, some separation of concerns and split up your project into multiple um, parts, the simple library archetype will help you set up a simple library. Um, last not least, uh, we have the type dev archetype. I think this is a really interesting thing um, because with this you can set up, uh, assuming you uh, found this fascinating JavaScript library and you would love to write a Flex application that uses that. Um, so by using the simple type dev archetype, you'll get a project which you can sort of drop in some JavaScript and it will produce a, fl a Flex library that you can start writing code for this uh, fascinating new library you found. Okay, so. Don't want to be just talking, okay? It's not even doing some line breaks. Um, so now we're going to have a little demo, and I'll just show you how fast and easy you can get your first Flex.js application running with Maven. Okay. Hmm. Ah, there was a trick, I think, because that's full screen, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, there? Where's the full screen mode? I hate that. So, um, to make it a little easier, um, I already typed that. Um, so, what happens here is, uh, oh, it's not recorded if I go there. Um, what happens here is uh, we call uh, a Maven plugin called the Archetype plugin to generate a project. Uh, if we just left it there, it would sort of look in Maven Central and look at all the archetypes there are. Um, if you started using archetypes about 10 years ago, that was cool. But right now, I think there are several thousand archetypes you sort of would have to scroll through. So what I'm doing here is I'm providing the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version of the archetype I want to use. It looks a little lengthy, but there's no real magic to it. Any questions? You sort of, or it's just too hard to read. Oh well. Okay, so off we go, and fingers crossed. Ah, ah okay. So it's asking me uh, for a group ID. I want to give the th thing. So. Um, I'll just call it org Apache Flex demo. Um, give it a name. It already suggests a version. A package name. Asks me if I if I mistyped anything. And it's generated. So you can see uh, there is a, a POM and a source directory. So if we want to build it, you can see the, the 
Uh, did you, you saw the ASCII art logo? So that's the little thing I built into uh, th uh, the Mavenizer to that you can see that it's actually working because we did have problems in the past that people said, yeah, well, I did it uh, and it doesn't, still doesn't work. Uh, if you see that, you're safe. Um, I hope it says build successful. Yep. Well, that's good, but it doesn't have to mean it works. <laughs> so now I'll just go into that directory. So now you can see in where it is my mouse. In the target directory we have JavaScript bin debug and there is the index HTML and as soon as I open this I really hope I'll see this hello world. That's awesome, huh? It's the coolest hello world in the world. Um, but we could also see that there was also a Swift. Uh, here it had the, on, on, on this side it said hello, hello world. <laughs> it's, it's a shy hello world. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so you can see it was really, really easy to get started. Uh, well, it's getting a little, uh, it will probably get a little more complicated if you want to do more than uh, just this little hello world. Yeah, uh, I'll just open that here and push it over. And use the cool presentation mode. see it here, okay. Huh. Never quite used that. Um, so, there it is. Where's the palm? There? Okay, so, um, as you can see, um, up here, there were the, the coordinates, um, the, the archetype asked me, so the, the group ID, artifact ID, and version. Uh, the Swift packaging is coming from the template. Um, also, I'm defining a, a variable there called compiler.debug. I use that to sort of set the compiler to produce debug versions and optimized versions. Uh, the optimized version still builds the debug version, but it's sort of processes the debug version to become a final version. It does all this minifying and uh, stripping away of the uh, code. The important parts here are that, uh, um, this extensions uh, tag, because if you leave that away, uh, Maven will complain that it doesn't know what to do with the Swift packaging on top. So by defining the flex uh, JS Maven plugin and telling Maven that this is an extension, uh, you will be able to build uh, FlexJS applications. Um, I did create the plugin that it's completely separated from the compiler itself, so it should be possible to use the FlexJS Maven plugin to uh, with the original Flex compiler. It's it's completely separate, so you have to provide the compiler you want to use. 
uh, we were also thinking of uh, moving the the Maven plugin into a separate project so we could release them separately. So that's just uh, something you have to keep in mind. You have to provide a reference to the compiler. Here all we have to do is tell the compiler what's my main class and what type of output do we want. Um, so in this case we're creating the Swift and the JavaScript version. Um, our code does depend on um, some other libraries, and these are defined down here. And here comes one uh, specialty. Well, we need core, where we got some of the core functionality. Uh, so we got a normal SWIC dependency on a core. But, uh, for example, when compiling uh, the Flash version, we need a reference to Player Global or Air Global, that's sort of uh, the core library uh, for everything built with Flash. Um, and the JavaScript version, uh, in contrast, needs uh, the other two uh, libraries defined down there. So if you just build a Flash application, you can leave the uh, lower dependencies away. If you're just building a JavaScript one, you can uh, omit the Air Global reference. Yeah. Also, because you have like separate with this one. Yeah. Well, I I def. It could, it could be in the oh, I think I have to adjust my archetype because uh, there should be a a debug that references the variable. So if I tell Maven to use the debug pr the release profile, that it sets this variable to false. A good point. <laughs> So, any questions to that? Can you show us how you actually uh, um, modify your archetype? Uh, yeah. So we don't have to bug you on the anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me... So, uh, that's not the right one. Is it now? No. It says it's the Flex.js version. Is it? No, it's not. No, no. no I thought so. <laughs> Come on. I'm just going to close that. It must have sort of magically disappeared. It's still telling me it's there, but I can't see it. Or is it behind everything? Um, I'll show you after. Yeah, it's it's quite easy. It's sort of these archetypes are sort of uh, simple Maven um, modules in which everything you need is sort of put into the resources of uh, the source main resources um, of the archetype module. Uh, but inside the archetype, you replace things you want dynamically updated with some escaped values. It's sort of a templating thing. It's, it's quite easy to understand. So you don't have to mess around with that. No, not at all. It's just text editor. So let me get back. I hope I'll find my way back to my presentation. Oh, that's looking good. OK. So um, OK, I already did the dive into the palm. Um, so. Not all is good right now. Um, not all dependencies are available as Maven artifacts. Well, if we go down the JavaScript path, it's great because we have the opportunity to uh, work on that. But on the Flash side, uh, Adobe will never 
uh, release their stuff in Maven Central. So we will always have this problem of providing these resources. Um, the Mavenizer, I'm currently working on the last pieces I need to release that. I didn't want to release it before being able to process content in DMG files. Uh, I know on the mailing list there were some discussions about using system calls to execute that, but I'm no big friend of that because right now the Maven converter is able to even produce Mac uh, libraries on a Windows machine. So I, I wouldn't want to give up on that. Um, and these uh, executions would simply miserably fail on a Windows machine. Um, so I'm currently implementing the DMG uh, decompression code. I'll probably put that to uh, Apache Commons. Unfortunately, the Apache Commons guy just left. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I'm currently working on. And as soon as the Mavenizer is released, we are getting rid of quite a lot of problems. Um, right now, we are using simple compile scopes in Flex. So we don't have big problems uh, at the moment, but everyone who worked with the old Flex SDK, you know, we had scopes like RSLs, or the signed RSLs, uh, or um, yeah, we, we had different scopes that Java just, does, just doesn't know about. And uh, with Flex Mojos, we sort of worked around that because there was a bug in Maven that sort of, as soon as there was a scope, it didn't know, it sort of defaulted to uh, compile. That was cool because we could do whatever we wanted this way, but they fixed that bug. Uh, and now uh, transitive dependencies of non-compiled scopes aren't resolved anymore. So if I had a library that, if I had a library A that requires B uh, and I would include it as a normal SWIC, that would be okay. But if I sort of said, yeah, well, that should be an RSL, then we wouldn't get B. So we would have to start and try figuring out, sort of declaring dependencies multiple times. Uh, I'm no big friend of that, but the good thing is I've been talking quite uh, intensively with the Maven guys, and they just recently um, got a, a part of code we needed donated from the uh, Eclipse Foundation. Uh, I don't know if you followed that discussion, the, the Ether project, the. Eclipse Ether project is now part of Maven, and now we have control over the code we need to be finally able to provide an extensible mechanism for providing non-default Java scopes. So I'm currently waiting on uh, these extension points to be established, and as soon as that's gonna happen, uh, I'll be doing some really deep Maven uh, extension stuff so we can finally use all our good stuff with Maven without any, um, without any problems. Another thing that's currently bugging me quite, quite a lot is a few months ago, SourceForge updated their SSL encryption. And that's sort of, uh, people from the US will probably not have noticed that, but everyone outside will, because uh, Java simply isn't able to support that deep level of encryption. And this level of encryption is sort of, uh, I think there are some uh, US export restrictions that sort of prevent that from being shipped with the GDK. There seems to be a way to manually install a Java cryptography extension to make Java download that, but I haven't seen that work reliably. So it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Yes, Justin? It's, it's not only a problem with Maven. The uh, installer also has the same problem. Yeah, OK. Mm. Yeah, well, it's one thing. Uh, I think it might probably be the easiest way uh, that I simply uh, re-implement the libraries we needed from there, because it's simply the font kit stuff to do the font encoding. Uh, that we are still using from, I think it's still version one, and I think it hasn't changed for, feels like 10 years or so. Um, 
So as soon as I re-implement that library, uh, those problems go away too. But I have to implement that, and I'm not looking forward to doing font encoding stuff, but... Hmm? No, I haven't had a look at that. But I think we need a special encoding. It's not the decoding of uh, fonts uh, I'm worried about. There are uh, cool libraries for that. But I have to encode stuff in a way the Flash player knows about it. And I would be surprised if Adobe chose a format that is uh, standardized and... Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, um, one thing that I would like to finish really soon is um, simplifying the dependencies. Uh, one thing you didn't see, um, but I can show you later on, uh, that we, we are building two versions of libraries, one that was compiled for JavaScript and one that was compiled for Flash. Um, so. We do need uh, to reference both libraries if we want to be able to build both types. And I think that's just uh, too complicated for most users. And with the changes in the dual branch, uh, it should be the first step on a way to produce Swix that contain, um, you know, has any one of you had a look into a Swix? So inside a SWIG there is a catalog XML and uh, an, an, a SWIF file that uh, contains the bytecode for the Flash version. So what I'm proposing is that we sort of have a catalog JS XML file in there and uh, um, the, the corresponding SWIF file, uh, the Flash, Flash side would simply treat that as uh, binary garbage in the in the in the file, uh, and it wouldn't mess up anything there. And we could make our compiler sort of look into that catalog file, so we wouldn't have to do this distinction. We would just have I need library X in version Z, and we wouldn't have to do define multiple dependencies. No, it's still producing. Uh, it's still producing two files, and uh, you still need to. Uh, if you have a look at the examples, that it usually says, "Well, depend on um, you depend on core," and core internally has, "Well, I depend on uh, something else and something else JS." So uh, this morning, that was the first thing I checked when I woke up this morning because sort of was lying in bed, was awake, and thought, I didn't see any JavaScript dependencies in my archetype. Holy crap, does that work? So I just did a check and, ah, yeah, okay, it's just one level beneath. So an end user doesn't explicitly see it, but we do require two versions. Okay, you do probably. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, talked about the past and the current situation. What is to come? Well, the th the top thing on my list is the Mavenizer. Uh, I don't know if anybody still remembers that, but the that code was the thing that got me involved with the Flex project. I I donated it uh, shortly after going to ApacheCon in Zinsheim. And it's still in the 1.0 snapshot, so uh, I should probably finally finish it, release it, ship it. Um, next thing on my list is FlexJS unit support. Um, the old Flex Mojos uh, did some really, a really nice job, sort of scanning through the project. Uh, like uh, the JUnit integration uh, does, it scans for test cases and automatically creates uh, a runnable test suite and runs that and sort of instantly starts a listener that 
the browser then connects to and uh, passes back information. So you can get uh, full unit test coverage reports that Maven understands uh, right outside your Maven build. So that's one thing I'm going to be working on. Another thing I started and sort of had to delay just uh, as a lack of time is uh, AS stock generation. Um, currently, the project is focusing on uh, creating a Flex uh, or a, uh, an AS doc viewer that's created in Flex.js. Um, but I think it would be good that we had a, a classical AS doc generation in Maven that we are able to produce static HTML uh, documentation pages. So IDEs and Google and everything that is used to handling HTML files for documentation will be able to provide uh, direct uh, documentation for Flex.js. Um, yeah, as I said, as soon as the Maven guys fire out their extension points, uh, I'm going to definitely do the, the extension mechanism for uh, dependencies. And if I still have any life left in me, I'll probably re-implement the Edo font kit libraries. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, forget it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm right at the end, uh, 51 minutes, cool. Uh, so, any questions? Has anybody... Uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna... showing how I change um, a framework uh, class and I can actually use it in my test application. Um, suppose I wanted to use Maven on the uh, uh, framework. Um, would that be a problem? I mean, I know mixing ant and Maven doesn't work very well. Uh, would that be a problem with the IDs? I have no real idea because uh, I was working on fixing uh, IntelliJ's uh, integration, um, but I didn't get that good support from the JetBrains guys. Um, I think it should be possible because the um, it isn't that difficult to to extend IntelliJ. Uh, Justin, do you have anything to? Yeah, I, I've tried to get it. Yeah, so, that, so that's the way I usually do it. I edit in IntelliJ and then I just hit the button and uh, a few seconds after that it's finished. Especially, especially you don't have to rebuild the whole application every time you change something. So it is enough that if you work on HTML, for example, or, or, or core, that you just build that module that's a few seconds, and then you build your application, so. You have to do a clean of your application. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's one thing. Uh, in Seville, there were some uh, guys from the Maven project sitting here, and well, they, you, you could sort of really see them, ah, he said clean install, oh, damn it. Uh, yeah, well, in the Java world, uh, it's usually not treated as good or best practice to do a clean install, but, <laughs> Here we're producing a lot of different files and um, especially uh, the state the compiler is currently in, I wouldn't trust it on working on things like incremental builds or um, recompiling stuff. So I would suggest to stick to the clean install for now. Does clean install download? No, no. Uh, well, the first time it does. First time you download the internet, and after that it's there. Um, if, as soon as you change a version number, then it tries to download the new version number, but it stores it locally in the, the Maven local repository and uses it from there. It, it will download the latest snapshots. 
Yeah, yeah. Unless you tell it not to. Yeah. So uh, we currently set up uh, the uh, several builds on the ASF Jenkins machines, and they produce, on every commit, the snapshots are updated, and your Maven will call back and check if something changed once a day. So usually, as soon as it's midnight, I know it's time to go to bed when it's this one build where it starts contacting Maven Central again. So, oh, damn, it's 12 again. Oh, I have to go to bed. Yeah. There's an, uh, it's a GPL project, but I don't know if it'll fit or not. There's something called FontForge. FontForge. Well, if it's GPL, I think we'll have a problem. Huh? Well, it depends on how you want to use it, right? If it's a, a font, category. Font libraries are already optional. The font libraries are under a commercial license. Okay. If it's optional and you're not, and, you're, and it has everything, and you don't need to actually modify it. So you just need to run the commands. OK. I will definitely have a look at that. Because I don't really. And, and who knows? It's been around a long time. You know, perhaps they would relicense it. Perhaps they can't. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Well then, um, thank you. And let's grab some lunch. <laughs>